The Douglas D558-2 Skyrocket or D558II is a rocket and jet-powered research supersonic aircraft built by the Douglas Aircraft Company for the United States Navy. On 20 November 1953, shortly before the 50th anniversary of powered flight, Scott Crossfield piloted the Skyrocket to Mach 2, or more than 1,290 miles per hour the first time an aircraft had exceeded twice the speed of sound. <laughs> Design and development The minus two in the aircraft's designation referred to the fact that the Skyrocket was the Phase II version of what had originally been conceived as a three-phase program. The Phase I aircraft, the D-558-1, was jet-powered and had straight wings. The third phase, which never came to fruition, would have involved constructing a mock-up of a combat-type aircraft embodying the results from the testing of the Phase I and II aircraft. The eventual D-558-3 design, which was never built, was for a hypersonic aircraft similar to the North American X-15, when it became obvious that the D-558-1 fuselage could not be modified to accommodate both rocket and jet power, the D-558-2 was conceived as an entirely different aircraft. A contract change order was issued on 27 January 1947 to formally drop the final three D-558-1 aircraft and substitute three new D-558-2 aircraft instead. The Skyrocket featured wings with a 35-degree sweep and horizontal stabilizers with 40-degree sweep. The wings and empennage were fabricated from aluminum and the large fuselage was of primarily magnesium construction. The Skyrocket was powered by a Westinghouse J3440 turbojet engine fed through side intakes in the forward fuselage. This engine was intended for takeoff, climb and landing. For high-speed flight, a four-chamber reaction motors LR8RM6 engine the Navy designation for the Air Force's XLR11 used in the Bell X-1, was fitted. This engine was rated at 6,000 lbf 27 kilonewtons static thrust at sea level. A total of 250 U.S. gallons 950 L of aviation fuel, 195 U.S. gallons 740 L of alcohol, and 180 U.S. gallons 680 L of liquid oxygen were carried in fuselage tanks. The Skyrocket was configured with a flush cockpit canopy, but visibility from the cockpit was poor, so it was reconfigured with a raised cockpit with conventional angled windows. This resulted in a greater profile area at the front of the aircraft, which was balanced by an additional 14 inches 36 centimeters of height added to the vertical stabilizer. Like its predecessor, the D-558-1, the D-558-2 was designed so that the forward fuselage, including cockpit, could be separated from the rest of the aircraft in an emergency. Once the forward fuselage had decelerated sufficiently, the pilot would then be able to escape from the cockpit by parachute. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Operational history. Douglas pilot John F. Martin made the first flight at Muroc Army Airfield, later renamed Edwards Air Force Base, in California on the 4th of February 1948 in an aircraft equipped only with the jet engine. The goals of the program were to investigate the characteristics of swept-wing aircraft at transonic and supersonic speeds with particular attention to pitch up uncommanded rotation of the nose of the aircraft upwards, a problem prevalent in high-speed service aircraft of that era, particularly at low speeds during takeoff and landing, and in tight turns. The three aircraft gathered a great deal of data about pitch up and the coupling of lateral yaw and longitudinal pitch motions, wing and tail loads, lift, drag and buffeting characteristics of swept wing aircraft at transonic and supersonic speeds, and the effects of the rocket exhaust plume on lateral dynamic stability throughout the speed range. Plume effects were a new experience for aircraft. The number no. 3 aircraft also gathered information about the effects of external stores bomb shapes, drop tanks upon the aircraft's behavior in the transonic region roughly 0.7 to 1.3 times the speed of sound. 
In correlation with data from other early transonic research aircraft such as the XF-92A, this information contributed to solutions to the pitch-up problem in swept-wing aircraft. Its flight research was done at the NACA's MUROC Flight Test Unit in California, redesignated in 1949 the High Speed Flight Research Station HSFRS. The HSFRS became the High Speed Flight Station in 1954 and was then known as the NASA Dryden Flight Research Center. In 2014 it was renamed Armstrong Flight Research Center in honor of Neil Armstrong. The three aircraft flew a total of 313 times 123 by the number no. 1 aircraft, Bureau number no. 37973, NACA 143, 103 by the second Skyrocket, Bureau number no. 37974, NACA 144, and 87 by aircraft number no. 3, Bureau no. 37,975 NACA 145. Skyrocket 143 flew all but one of its missions as part of the Douglas Contractor Program to test the aircraft's performance. NACA Aircraft 143 was initially powered by the jet engine only, but was later fitted with the rocket engine. In this configuration, it was tested by Douglas from 1949 to 1951. After Douglas test program, it was delivered to NACA, who stored it until 1954. In 1954-55 the contractor modified it to an all-rocket air launch capability with the jet engine removed. In this configuration, NACA research pilot John Mackay flew the aircraft only once for familiarization on 17 September 1956. The 123 flights of NACA 143 served to validate wind tunnel predictions of the aircraft's performance, except for the fact that the aircraft experienced less drag above Mach 0.85 than the wind tunnels had indicated. NACA 144 also began its flight program with a turbojet power plant. NACA pilots Robert A. Champion and John H. Griffith flew 21 times in this configuration to test airspeed calibrations and to research longitudinal and lateral stability and control. In the process, during August 1949 they encountered pitch-up problems, which NACA engineers recognized as serious because they could produce a limiting and dangerous restriction on flight performance. Hence, they determined to make a complete investigation of the problem. In 1950, Douglas replaced the turbojet with an LR-8 rocket engine, and its pilot, Bill Bridgman, flew the aircraft seven times up to a speed of Mach 1.88 1.88 times the speed of sound and an altitude of 79,494 feet 24,230 meters, the latter an unofficial world's altitude record at the time, achieved on 15 August 1951. In the rocket configuration, the aircraft was attached beneath the bomb bay of a Navy P-2B, a variant of the B-29 bomber. The P-2B would fly to about 30,000 feet 9,100 meters, then release the rocket plane. During Bridgman's supersonic flights, he encountered a violent rolling motion known as lateral instability. The motion was less pronounced during the Mach 1.88 flight on 7 August 1951 than during a Mach 1.85 flight in June when he pushed over to a low angle of attack. The NACA engineers studied the behavior of the aircraft before beginning their own flight research in the aircraft in September 1951. Over the next couple of years, NACA pilot Scott Crossfield flew the aircraft 20 times to gather data on longitudinal and lateral stability and control, wing and tail loads, and lift, drag, and buffeting characteristics at speeds up to Mach 1.878. At that point, Marine Lieutenant Col. Marion Carl flew the aircraft to a new, unofficial, altitude record of 83,235 feet 25,370 meters on 21 August 1953, and to a maximum speed of Mach 1.728. 
The altitude record was not recognized by the Fédération of Aéronautique Internationale, because at that time aircraft making record attempts had to take off on their own power. Following Carl's completion of these flights for the Navy, NACA technicians at the High Speed Flight Research Station HSFRS near Mojave, California, outfitted the LR 8 engine's combustion chambers with nozzle extensions to prevent the exhaust gas from affecting the rudders at supersonic speeds. This addition also increased the engine's thrust by 6.5% at Mach 1.7 and 70,000 feet 21,300 meters. Even before Marion Carl had flown the Skyrocket, HSFRS Chief Walter C. Williams had petitioned NACA headquarters unsuccessfully to fly the aircraft to Mach 2 to garner the research data at that speed. Finally, after Crossfield had secured the agreement of the Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics, NACA Director Hugh L. Dryden relaxed the organization's usual practice of leaving record setting to others and consented to attempting a flight to Mach 2. In addition to adding the nozzle extensions, the NACA flight team at the HSFRS chilled the fuel alcohol so more could be poured into the tank and waxed the fuselage to reduce drag. Project engineer Herman O. Ankenbrook drew up a plan to fly to about 72,000 feet 21,900 meters and push over into a slight dive. Crossfield made aviation history on 20 November 1953, when he flew to Mach 2.005, 1,291 miles per hour 2,078 kilometers per hour. It was the only Mach 2 flight the Skyrocket ever made. Following this flight, Crossfield and NACA pilots Joseph A. Walker and John B. Mackay flew the aircraft for such purposes as to gather data on pressure distribution, structural loads, and structural heating, with the last flight in the program occurring on 20 December 1956, when Mackay obtained dynamic stability data and sound pressure levels at transonic speeds and above. Meanwhile, NACA 145 had completed 21 contractor flights by Douglas pilots Eugene F. May and William Bridgman in November 1950. In this jet and rocket propelled craft, Scott Crossfield and Walter Jones began the NACA's investigation of pitch up lasting from September 1951 well into summer 1953. They flew the Skyrocket with a variety of wing fence, wing slat and leading edge cord extension configurations, performing various maneuvers as well as straight and level flying at transonic speeds. While fences significantly aided recovery from pitch-up conditions, leading edge cord extensions did not, disproving wind tunnel tests to the contrary. Slats long, narrow auxiliary airfoils in the fully open position eliminated pitch-up except in the speed range around Mach 0.8 to 0.85. In June 1954, Crossfield began an investigation of the effects of external stores bomb shapes and fuel tanks upon the aircraft's transonic behavior. Mackay and Stanley Butchart completed the NACA's investigation of this issue, with Mackay flying the final mission on 28 August 1956. Besides setting several records, the Skyrocket pilots had gathered important data and understanding about what would and would not work to provide stable, controlled flight of a swept-wing aircraft in the transonic and supersonic flight regimes. The data they gathered also helped to enable a better correlation of wind tunnel test results with actual flight values, enhancing the abilities of designers to produce more capable aircraft for the armed services, especially those with swept wings. Moreover, data on such matters as stability and control from this and other early research aircraft aided in the design of the Century series of fighter aircraft, all of which featured the movable horizontal stabilizers first employed on the X-1 and D-558 series. Variants <laughs> 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 All three of the Skyrockets had 35-degree swept wings. Until configured for air launch, NACA-143 featured a Westinghouse J3440 turbojet engine rated at 3,000 lbf 13 static thrust. It carried 260 U.S. gallons 980 L of aviation gasoline and weighed 10,572 pounds 4,795 kilograms at takeoff. 
NACA 144 and NACA 143 after modification in 1955 was powered by an LR8RM6 rocket engine rated at 6,000 pounds force 27 kilonewtons static thrust. Its propellants were 345 U.S. gallons 1, L of liquid oxygen and 378 U.S. gallons 1, L of diluted ethyl alcohol. In its launch configuration, it weighed 15,787 pounds 7,161 kilograms. NACA-145 had both an LR-8RM-5 rocket engine rated at 6,000 lbf 27 kilonewtons static thrust and featured a Westinghouse J-3440 turbojet engine rated at 3,000 lbf 13 kilonewtons static thrust. It carried 170 U.S. gallons 640 L of liquid oxygen, 192 U.S. gallons 730 L of diluted ethyl alcohol, and 260 U.S. gallons 980 L of aviation gasoline for a launch weight of 15,266 pounds 6,925 kilograms. Aircraft serial numbers D-558-2 Skyrocket D-558-2 Number 1 Number 37973 NACA 143, 123 Flights D-558-2 Number 2 Number 37974 NACA 144, 103 flights D-558-2 Number 3 Number 37975 NACA 145, 87 flights Topic. Surviving aircraft D-558-2 No. 1 Skyrocket is on display at the Plains of Fame Museum, Chino, California. The No. 2 Skyrocket, the first aircraft to fly Mach 2, is on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. The third aircraft is displayed on a pylon in the grounds of Antelope Valley College, Lancaster, California. Topic. Specifications D-558-2 Skyrocket Configured with mixed propulsion Data from McDonnell Douglas Aircraft since 1920, Volume 1, General Characteristics Crew, 1 Length, 42 feet 13 meters Wingspan, 25 feet 7.6 meters Height 12 feet 8 in 3.86 meters. Wing area 175 square feet 16.3 square meters. Airfoil route NACA 63010, tip NACA 63012. Launch weight turbojet only 10,572 pounds 4,795 kilograms. Launch weight mix power 15266 pounds 6925 kilograms Launch weight rocket only 15787 pounds 7161 kilograms Fuel capacity Turbojet fuel capacity 250 US gal 210 imp gal 950 L av gas Rocket fuel capacity: 195 US gal, 162 imp gal, 740 L alcohol. Rocket oxidizer capacity: 180 US gal, 150 imp gal, 680 L LOX. Turbopump H202 capacity: 11 US gal, 9.2 imp gal, 42 L high test hydrogen peroxide (HTP). Powerplant, 1 times Westinghouse J34WE40 turbojet engine, 3000 lbf 13 kilonewtons thrust 
power plant, one times reaction motors XLR8 RM54 chambered liquid fueled rocket engine, 6000 lbf, 27 kilonewtons thrust performance. Maximum speed 585 miles per hour 941 kilometers per hour 508 knots at 20000 feet 6100 meters on turbojet only 720 miles per hour 630 knots 1160 kilometers per hour at 40000 feet 12000 meters on mixed power with conventional takeoff 1250 miles per hour 1090 knots 2010 kilometers per hour at 67500 feet 20600 meters on rocket power air launched stall speed 160 miles per hour 257 kilometers per hour 139 knots rate of climb 22400 feet per minute 114 meters per second mixed power 11100 feet per minute 3400 meters per minute rocket power only wing loading 60.4 pounds per square foot 295 kilograms per square meter turbojet engine only 87.2 pounds per square foot 426 kilograms per square meter mixed power 90 2 pounds per square foot 440 kilograms per square meter rocket engine only topic see also related development Douglas D558 one skystreak aircraft of comparable role configuration and era Bell X2 related lists List of experimental aircraft List of rocket aircraft